content, we have Paul Walker. On November 30th, 2013, Paul Walker attended a charity event for Reach Out Worldwide. He was last captured driving off in a red Porsche Carrera GT. Little did he know that later that day, the car would crash into a concrete lamppost and two trees before bursting into flames, killing Walker and the driver instantly. It's so sad looking at this photo. Like, Paul seemed happy. He got into the car not knowing his fate. In fact, what makes this scarier is that he might have still been alive had it not been for one text. He woke up that morning completely forgetting about the charity event that he had to go to. That was until someone texted him to remind him. Had he not gone to the event and just stayed home, things would have been different. Coming in at number nine, we have Robin Williams, one of the greatest actors and comedic minds that has ever passed through Hollywood. There was movie after movie that this guy made that influenced people from my generation and so many generations after. And right before we get further into this point, guys, remember that you can like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell and stick around to the end of the list because we're gonna be answering some comments from our previous video, top 10 Disney mysteries. I mean, we can go down the list. This guy was in Aladdin, Jumanji, Mrs. Doubtfire, all of those movies were certified bangers and this was the last picture of him before he passed. He looks so happy. He's chilling out with his monkey crystal and the two of them are just being the best of friends but even having one of the coolest pets of all time wasn't enough to keep him happy. Unfortunately shortly after this picture was taken Robin Williams would visit the doctor and get a very sad diagnosis. It would seem that he had Parkinson's. It was devastating news that would lead to him taking his own life. Apparently he was misdiagnosed and he actually had a specific type of dementia which leads to paranoia. In our eighth spot we have Amelia Earhart. The fate of Amelia Earhart is still unknown. Did she die in a plane crash? Did she get stranded on a deserted island? We honestly don't know. In 1937, Amelia set out with her navigator Fred Noonan to fly around the world. One of the last photos of Amelia was her packing her suitcase for travels, in which she would never return from. Much like these other celebrities, she looked so happy, just excited to go on this adventure. But little did she know it would end in tragedy. Amelia and Fred were last heard from on on July 2nd, 1937, the government spent 15 years looking for them. In fact, searching for Earhart was the largest and most expensive search in American history. Sadly, hardly anything came of this. They thought that maybe the plane crashed somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, but who really knows? Coming in at number seven, we have Gene Wilder. It's impressive how Gene Wilder was able to be both hilarious and terrifying in many of his performances. Like throughout most of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, he's kind of scared. But then when you check out Blazing Saddles, he's one of the funniest dudes around. This was the last picture taken of him, or at least the last one that was shared to the public. He lived well into his 80s, and in this picture you can see him with his daughter walking in Los Angeles. It was in 2013 when one of the most famous actors in the world would learn that he was battling Alzheimer's. This is obviously a very strenuous disease, and it can slowly wither a person away. It's a tough battle, and because of this, Gene wanted to stay out of the public eye. So after he was told by Dr doctors that he was fighting Alzheimer's, he decided that he would stay out of the peering eye of fans and become a homebody. And I mean, it sounds like a solid move. You had an amazing career, so in your last few years it would be nice to relax. He passed away in 2016. And at number 8 we have the dangerous selfie. Taking selfies any and everywhere is kind of the new norm, but you would never think that a selfie would be deadly. Sadly, you'd be mistaken. Back in March of 2017, best friends Nizia Mendoza Corral and Clarissa Morquicho Miranda were taking selfies on an airstrip when they were hit and killed by an oncoming plane. The two were standing in the back of a van when this happened, but they were warned not to do so. They took this photo, and moments later, they were hit by a wing of a plane that they didn't see coming. They passed away instantly. Now, when you look at this photo, it just feels so dark knowing seconds later the girls lost their lives. Coming in at number 7 we have the extreme selfie. 26 year old Wu Yongning was known for his extreme selfies. He was considered a rooftopper which means he would stand on high buildings or structures or other precarious places and take photos and videos doing so. He made a living doing this and he would do so with no harness, net or safety equipment. This photo was one of the last photos he ever took. 
That was before November of 2017 when he died after falling off of a 62 story building. He was doing this as part of a contest to win 100,000 yuans, but this would be the last of his dangerous stunts. He climbed up to the top of that building that day with the hopes of winning that prize. He never thought it would end the way that it did. Coming in at number 6 we have Gary Slock. This selfie is of Gary Slock and his mother aboard their flight. Little did they know the horrors that would soon await. They were both excited for their vacation to Malaysia. The trip was designed for single parents and their children. Sadly, three hours after that photo was taken, a missile shot down the plane as it flew over eastern Ukraine. There were no survivors. The two were so excited for their trip. They referred to it as their dream holiday. Again, just look how happy the two were. This breaks my heart. What if the gods of rock and roll, a man who paved the way for the carefree and breakout behavior of the 70s, his music would define a generation and the things he could do with a guitar would shake the heavens themselves and this was the last picture taken of him. This guy was so legendary that there were several rumors created about this rock icon, most of them related to his music career and his habitual partying. People said he used to put acid in his headband when he went out to play. Eventually he would start to sweat and the LSD would seep into his skin and he would be on a wild ride of psychedelics while playing in front of thousands of people. I can't even imagine what that experience would have been like. There's also talk that he wrote the whole song Purple Haze about an LSD trip but the official statement is that it was a dream. But unfortunately his partying lifestyle eventually caught up with him. Jimi Hendrix was found dead on the floor of a hotel room after he asphyxiated on his own vomit. This was caused by a cocktail of drugs and alcohol that he had taken and then he would join the infamous 27 Club. Coming in at number 9 we have John F. Kennedy. But guys before I go any further make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel because it really helps us out. Also hit that bell notification so you never miss an upload from us. Thank you. Alright, so this photo was one of the last photos of John F. Kennedy. It was taken just before his assassination in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963. In the photo, you can see President Kennedy in his car waving to the audience. A little while later, at 12.30 p.m., he was shot in the head and died instantly. This may be one of the last photos of him, but someone managed to capture his very last moments on film. Abraham Zapruder was filming Kennedy while this all went down and got every gory detail on camera. That's extremely sad. Coming in at number 8 we have Carrie Fisher. She was the first love for so many nerds out there. Every kid growing up in the 80s remembers Princess Leia in a bronze bikini being kept by the disgusting Jabba the Hutt. But Carrie Fisher will always be remembered because she's one of the most important parts of the biggest movie franchise in the world. And she's had a pretty amazing career, but eventually old age will get all of us. This was the last picture taken of the famous actress. A fan stopped her in the street and asked her for a picture and the kind soul that she is she obliged. The next day she would be on a plane and partway through the flight she started to experience some chest pains. Fisher was experiencing a heart attack in the air. The pilot landed and she was rushed to the hospital but she would pass away four days later. In our seventh spot we have Sharon Tate. These beautiful photos of Sharon Tate were taken a couple of days before she was brutally murdered by the Manson family. In the photo she was eight and a half months pregnant with her first child. You can see her posing for photos with her baby bump showing proud. A couple days later, on August 8th, Manson ordered his cult followers to go to the home that Sharon was renting and have everyone there gruesomely murdered. Why? Well, some say it's because the home's previous owner, a music producer, Terry Melcher, pissed off Charles by not giving him a recording contract. It's just sad that Sharon had to die like that and so young. Had they rented a different house? Things may have been different. Coming in at number 3 we have Aaliyah. Aaliyah was a rising star in the R&B community and it seemed that she was going to be the next star in the music industry. Literally everyone who was into music was talking about her. Before she was 22 years old she had already won 14 awards and been nominated for 73 awards through different music organizations. There's a good portion of us who don't even have our driver's license at 22 but her death would shock the world. Either one of those two pictures is thought to be the last of Aaliyah. They didn't have timestamps on every last picture back then. So we don't know exactly which one it is, but Aaliyah would board a plane that was headed to the Bahamas. It should have been a nice short trip, but the plane crashed. Out of nowhere, the next big thing in music was gone. In our second spot, we have John Lennon. On December 8th, 1980, John Lennon was assassinated outside of his Manhattan apartment. Earlier that day, Lennon was photographed signing autographs for fans. The last photo of him was him signing an autograph for the man who would later murder him. It's 
so eerie. The photo literally foreshadows his fate. He was literally pictured with his killer. Later that night, the man in the photo, David Chapman, returned to Lennon's apartment and waited outside for him. When he came down, Chapman shot him four times in the back. That's just way too freaky for me. And coming in at the number one spot, we have Marilyn Monroe. I mean, what didn't Marilyn Monroe do? It's thought that she changed how women could represent themselves in the public eye. She was one of the biggest beauty icons of all time. It's thought that she had an affair with the President of the United States. She was a bona fide legend and she may never be forgotten. This was the last known picture taken of the superstar. She was hanging out with one of her buddies, Buddy Greco, who was a famous jazz musician of the time. Man, jazz has changed a lot. It used to be the coolest thing in town. There's no way you could be playing jazz now and it would get you into the arms of Scarlett Johansson. On the record, her death was deemed a suicide, but off the record, it seemed that the CIA might have taken her out. She knew too many secrets from being close to the president. They couldn't let those secrets. Starting off this countdown, we have Prabhu Batara. Prabhu Batara was a taxi driver in India that got mauled to death by a bear after trying to take a selfie with it. He was driving some passengers home from a wedding when he spotted a bear by the side of the road. He got out, leaving the passengers in the car, promising he would only be a few minutes. The bear was injured and trying to drink water from a pond. When he got too close to it, the bear attacked. He got pulled to the ground and clawed at. The photos you see here are photos people took of the incident as it happened. Now people did go to his rescue but were afraid for their own life. So they tried to scare off the bear by throwing rocks and sticks at it. But in the end, this enraged the bear even more. He passed away minutes after these photos were taken. Moving on to number 9, we have David Johnston. David Johnston was a 31 year old volcanoologist that fell victim to a volcano explosion on May 18th, 1980. 13 hours before his death, this photo was taken of him. That was the very spot that he was killed. So on that day, it was Johnston's shift to keep an eye on Mount St. Helen, the mountain where the explosion occurred. He was six miles away from the volcano. That morning, the eruption came fast and without warning. As it was erupting, he signaled to the base saying, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it. Shortly after he radioed that, he was killed by a lateral blast from the volcano. Sadly, his body was never found. All that was left were remnants of his trailer. Now, it breaks my heart seeing that photo. Just look how happy he looks. Little did he know that 13 hours later, that would be it. Coming in at number six, we have Chris McCandless. Chris was a 24 year old American adventurer. In 1992, Chris set out on another adventure, this time into the Alaskan wilderness. However, he never made it out alive. His death has been debated for years. Some say he died of starvation. Others believe that he died of poisoning after eating toxic berries. The last photo ever captured of Chris was a picture he took of himself smiling and waving to the camera, holding a note. The note is is believed to have said, I have had a happy life and thank the Lord. Goodbye and may God bless all. Later, he was found dead by a group of hunters. The hunters were looking for a shelter for the night when they came across the bus where Chris was staying in. But when they entered, they discovered Chris laying in his sleeping bag at the back of the bus. His manes were already decomposing. Now, the last thing Chris ever wrote read, day 107 beautiful blueberries. Then days 108 through 112 contained no words, they just had slashes. And on day 113, there was no entry at all. So maybe it was some toxic berry that killed him. But still, this photo is super eerie, especially because of the sign he was holding. It's like he knew he wasn't going to make it. Coming in at number five, we have Nikola Tesla, one of the greatest minds to ever grace the earth. This dude was straight up one of the smartest people who has ever lived. If it wasn't for this guy, we wouldn't have the radio, we wouldn't have access to electricity the way that we do today. And even though he has nothing to do with the company Tesla that makes electric cars, there would be a solid chance that those electric cars wouldn't be running right now if it wasn't for the inventions that this man made. This was the last known picture of the inventor. He looks like he was ill, but he was actually mostly thin because he had changed his diet to eating very light. He wouldn't eat meat and he mostly lived off bread, honey, and vegetable juices. Probably the saddest part about the end of 
Tesla's life is that he basically had no money, although he did find pleasure in pigeons. For some reason, the inventor had an obsession with pigeons. He would go to the park and feed them and even said that they gave him some of the ideas for his inventions. That's the secret. We've got to start hanging out with more pigeons. In our fourth spot, we have James Dean. On September 30th, 1955, James Dean died in a car accident at only 24 years old. It's said that he was driving fast and suddenly had to swerve out of the way to avoid an oncoming car, but ended up hitting it almost head on. It's said that Dean died instantly, but his passenger survived with injuries. That day, Dean was photographed posing with the very car he later died in. In fact, that car is said to be cursed. He only owned it for nine days before his death. Later, after he died, the car rolled off the back of a truck and crushed the legs of a mechanic. Then the car's parts were dissembled and installed into other cars around the world. All those car owners also got into deadly crashes. So Dean's last picture was literally with a cursed car that killed him. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the deadly Tinder date. A lot of people use the dating app Tinder, but there have been a number of Tinder horror stories of dates going terribly wrong, including this one. This is Cindy Loof. This is also the last photo of Cindy. Cindy was very excited to meet up with her Tinder date, Audrey, but Audrey wasn't who she said she was. She was actually a girl named Bailey Boswell. The two had already gone out the night before on November 14th, 2017. On that day, she sent a message to Bailey asking if it was only going to be the two of them. Previously, she had gone on dates with other women who would try to bring a male along for some extra fun. But Bailey reassured her it was only going to be them. On November 15th, on their second date, Bailey brought her boyfriend along. Bailey then convinced Sydney to participate in some acts with the two. This led to them playing a game in which Sydney was choked to death. So the last photo of Sydney was her all excited for her date which would later take her life. In our fourth spot, we have Anne Faber. On the evening of September 29th, 2017, Anne Faber went out for a bike ride by herself. By 6.50 p.m., she got caught in the rain and sent this selfie to her boyfriend. An hour later, her boyfriend reached out to her, but by then, it was too late. Anne had already been kidnapped. Her body was found two weeks later in the woods. That was the last photo Anne ever took, and also the last photo of her. Moving on, number three, we have the stowaway. At 14 years of age, Keith Sapsford was sent to a Catholic residential school. He hated it so much that he fled, heading to the Sydney airport with hopes of stowing away on an airplane headed to Japan. But his plan took a deadly turn. On February 22nd of 1970, he snuck into the airport and climbed into the airplane's wheel compartment. He waited there safely for the plane to take off. Sadly, when the plane was 200 feet in the air, the plane wheels retracted and he fell 200 feet to his death. At this time, a photographer named John Gilpin was taking pictures at the airport when he saw the boy falling from the sky. He managed to capture this photo. That was the last photo ever taken of Keith. Literally, you see him falling from the sky, it's creepy. In our second spot, we have Japan Airlines Flight 123. This photo was recovered from Japan Airlines Flight 123, the flight that ended up in disaster with the plane crashing and 520 people dying. This incident is said to be one of the deadliest single plane crashes in the history. Only four passengers survived. On August 12th, 1985, the plane took off at 6.12 p.m. and was scheduled to arrive at Osaka one hour later. But during the flight, the pilot had trouble controlling the plane and they began to lose altitude quickly. This photo was taken as that was happening. You can see the oxygen masks drop down as a result. After failing to gain control of the plane, it crashed into Mount Takamagahara. This is the last photo of almost everyone on board. And in our number one spot, we have Regina K. Walters. Back in 1991, Regina K. Walters and her boyfriend ran off together. Later, they were picked up by a man named Robert Ben Rhodes. He was known as the truck stop killer. He was a serial killer that murdered over 50 women. Regina K. Walters was his last victim. This photo is of Regina after being abducted by Robert. He forced her to cut her hair and made her wear that dress and the heels you see in the photo. He then proceeded to take a number of photos of her, including this one in which she looks terrified for her own life. These photos were taken in an abandoned farmhouse where her body was later found. So the last photos of Regina were taken by her killer in the place she died. What gets 
gets me the most is the look in her eyes. She looks terrified, as anyone would be in her situation. Coming in number six, we have Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze was the man of his day. Roadhouse, Dirty Dancing, Point Break, Red Dawn, Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko! Sorry. All those movies. Great movie. Great movie. He was not only one of the biggest stars of his generation, but he was also a heartthrob and known for being in incredible shape. That's why the news of his sickness shook the world so hard. Patrick Swayze would be diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer and step away from film because of how ill he was. This was the last photo ever taken of him. It's wild to see this guy like this since he used to be known for having a rock solid body, but he's withered away. It really makes you see how devastating cancer can be to a person. On the brighter side, his last moments were spent with his family, which is how I'm sure he wanted to spend them. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Elvis Presley. In this photo taken on August 16th, 1977, we see Elvis Presley driving home after just visiting his dentist. Little did we know that later that day, he would be found dead in his bathroom by his girlfriend. Look at him driving home unaware that he was going going to die shortly after. Now apparently his death is due to heart failure from ongoing drug abuse, but it's also thought that maybe the codeine pills that the dentist gave him had something to do with his death. He was known to have a mild allergy to codeine. It's thought that maybe that drug just pushed him over the edge that day. Had he not been to the dentist, maybe things would have been different. Coming in at number four, we have Prince. We are back again with one of the best rock stars of all time. Prince will go down as one of the best musicians on earth. He could literally Really play everything. Dave Grohl was once asked if he thought that Prince was a better musician than him, and he said, dude, Prince is a better drummer than me. That's how good Prince is. Not to mention his persona. He was a character that was so uniquely him, we probably won't see someone like Prince around for a very long time. I think a few of you out there remember the Dave Chappelle sketch about Prince. This bores me. Is anyone up for a game of basketball? Apparently this guy could ball seriously as well, which is nuts. But Prince's intense lifestyle eventually caught up with him. He started having serious health problems. People say that from performing nearly every night and wearing high heels constantly, he developed terrible hip and back problems. This led to him eventually needing serious painkillers to function, and this sadly led to an overdose. This was the last picture of him alive. In our third spot, we have Princess Diana. This photo was taken on August 30. 1997, just before Diana died in a car crash. In the photo taken by paparazzi, we can see Diana in the car with her rumored boyfriend. Moments after the picture was taken, the intoxicated driver lost control of the car and crashed into a pillar. The driver and her boyfriend died instantly. Diana suffered from a concussion, a broken arm, cut thigh, and massive chest injuries. She died later in the hospital as a result. It's so sad, no one ever thought that this was going to happen to them. Especially Diana, who got into the car thinking she was going to arrive at her destination safely. Coming in at number two, we have Steve Irwin, otherwise known as the Crocodile Hunter. Steve was known for wrestling crocodiles and getting up close and personal with other dangerous creatures. The last photos taken of him were by tourists on September 4th, 2006. They saw him filming a documentary and stopped to take photos. One of the photos caught Steve waving to his fans. A little while later, Steve would die after a stingray's barb pierced through his chest. What's even more scary is that his last words were, I'm dying. That is so heartbreaking to think about. Coming in at the number one spot, we have Martin Luther King, one of the greatest men who ever lived. Martin Luther King fought tirelessly to push America towards a world of equality, to make the USA a place where people from every race could work side by side and didn't need to worry about the color of their skin. It's because of him and other people like him that we have the Civil Rights Act. On April 3rd, 1968, Dr. King was set to appear in Tennessee to talk about how black factory workers were being paid substantially less than their white co-workers for the same job. This was the last picture of him taken. Not long after this picture was taken, Martin Luther King was assassinated. He would be shot on the balcony, all because he thought that people of different races should be treated equally. We talk about people like this now so we don't forget what they've done for us. At number 10, we have Wall of Ash. What would you do in the face of a volcano? Would you pray for God to save you from this oncoming doom? Would you try to run for safety? Maybe you lock yourself indoors and end up like the most famous guy from Pompeii. Well, no matter your choice, I'm sure you'd be scared so bad you might pee your pants a little. I mean, look at this. Robert Lansbury took this picture in the face of terror and his oncoming doom. It was Mount St. Helens and it had just erupted and was about to send a murderous wall of unbreathable ash towards him. He snapped this picture because even though he died, he wanted some people to see the power of mother nature. I can only imagine the fear he felt as he saw this barreling towards him. At number nine, we have Tsunami. A massive earthquake shook the ocean floor 
and would send one of the most devastating disasters that we have ever seen to the shores of Thailand. There were thousands of people there, a mixture of tourists and locals, and no one would have expected what was about to happen. This picture was taken by one of Deborah Garlic's friends. And it you can see her and a bunch of people on the beach trying to escape the cold and have a nice tropical summer. Not long after this photo was taken, a massive tsunami hit the shores of the beach and beaches all over the country. In total, there were 230,000 people who died along with millions of dollars in property damage and people forced into poverty because everything they had ever owned was destroyed. These photos were developed and then given to Deborah's family so they could have a lasting image of their daughter and something to keep her memory in their hearts and minds. At number eight, we have Arjun Siena at the San Marino Grand Prix. Being one of the best drivers in the world, you never would expect you would meet your end in a crash. I mean, I guess you're kind of tempting fate by always driving super fast, but there are thousands of drivers who live long lives and never meet their end behind the wheel of their trusted machines. Artin Siena was one of the best when it came to Formula One driving. He was a three time champion and he was one of the favorites to win the San Marino Grand Prix in 1994. The young Italian man was only 34 at the time and this was one of the last photos ever taken of him. Look at him, he's cool, calm and collected. He's got the eye of the tiger and he was ready to take this race by storm. During the race he hit a corner a little too tight and lost control of his car and crashed into a retaining wall. Even though these cars Cars are built to crash and drivers crash all the time and walk away from it, today he wouldn't be so lucky. One of the tires of Sienna's car flew back and hit him in the head. Then he was rushed to the hospital, but it wasn't even a day later before he was pronounced dead. At number seven, we have risking it all. It's crazy what people will do for their social media. I know it's a business for a lot of people. I mean, I'm in that business myself, but I can promise you that I will never do something risky like this. All the pictures I post will be of me being lazy and probably eating some food and maybe some memes thrown in there. That's as crazy as it's going to get. This picture was taken at the world famous cliff known as Europe's End. It's a beautiful view, but this couple wanted to push the boundaries of a good picture. Unfortunately, this would be the last picture that this woman ever took. Moments after this was taken, she lost her grip and she fell to her death. At number six, we have trying to escape. I can't imagine how terrifying it must be to be in this kind of situation. I'm gonna show you this and then I want you just to drink it in for a moment. Think of what that kid was feeling at that very moment. Falling from a plane at 200 feet in the air with no parachute. This is one of the scariest things I can think of. This was taken in 1970 totally by chance. An amateur photographer wanted to test out some of his new gear and caught this happening. Keith Sapsford had broken into an airport and snuck into the wheel well of a plane. He wanted to escape his old life. He wanted to see the world. His parents had just sent him off to an all boys Catholic boarding school and he refused to let that be his reality. He ran away and beelined it for the airport. He didn't know the wheel well would open again while flying. The sad part about this is he was doomed no matter what. If it wasn't the fall that killed him, the low temperatures and oxygen levels would have. Three, we have Flight MH17. For those of you who don't know, Flight MH17 was shot down by a missile while flying over the Ukraine. It was a devastating mistake and this was one of the last images that was ever sent off the plane before it was shot down. This is Gary and his mother Petra. It's such a happy picture and it's sad to think of all the other families that were on board this plane and how they thought everything would be fine. There would have never been any sign of anything going wrong until it was too late. At number two, we have the Challenger launch. In 1986, a group of seven people were set to jump into the Challenger space shuttle. It was supposed to be a wondrous moment in American space travel history, but a small error, a failed O-ring, would end up leading to the spacecraft failing and exploding over the Atlantic Ocean. 65 seconds into flight, NASA Control orders Commander Scobie to go to full power. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. This photo was the last photo taken as they were headed out to the spacecraft. You can see how excited everyone is and why shouldn't they be? They were going into space. That is something that so few of us get to do and it is supposed to be one of the most amazing things you can experience. In total, seven people died in the accident, one of them being a school teacher. One of the scariest things about this crash is that some people believe that the people on board survived the initial explosion but were killed when the craft hit the water. Could you imagine how frightening that experience would be? At number one, we have Mayinga Naseka fighting Ebola. 
One of the scariest things that has happened in recent years has been the outbreak of Ebola. There was a recent one in the 2000s that had everyone freaking out, and for good reason. Two Americans who had been working to treat Ebola patients in Africa have been stricken by the disease. Officials say they will be taken to Atlanta's Emory University Hospital in a tightly sealed isolation unit. If you come in contact with this virus, you're pretty much done. There's no cure and you have to hope through the right medical treatments that you will be one of the survivors. It literally eats away at your body until nothing is left but a husk. And the most recent outbreak isn't the first time that we've seen this virus make headlines. In 1976, there was a case of Ebola popping up all throughout Africa and because we didn't have the same technology back then, there was a much higher risk of the virus spreading and becoming a major threat to humanity. But thanks to people like this, we were kept safe from harm. This is nurse Mayinga Naseka putting herself at risk to save people with the Ebola virus. She was doing everything humanly possible to make sure people were comfortable and she was trying to stop the sickness from killing them. Unfortunately, this would eventually lead to her own death. She contracted the disease and she would die that same year. All right, everyone, that is our list. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as promised, I'm gonna be doing some more pet shout out. Remember, if you want me to shout out your pet, you can hit me up on Instagram. I pick new pets every day. So if you don't get picked one day, you can message back another day. And without taking any longer, let's shout out some pets. Starting off this list, we have Jinx. This cat is absolutely amazing. I love the tuxedo. Next, we got Blue. This guy looks like a sneaky little cat just hanging out. I like it. After that, we have Harley Quinn. This is a pumped up good boy ready to go. Then we have Frizz. Look at how loungy this guy is. He just wants to chill. Following that, we have Luna. Such a nice gray color to this cat. Beautiful. And closing out the list, we have Alfie. I don't know if there's such a thing as love at first sight, but I think it just happened. Starting off this countdown, we have the Challenger. On January 28th, 1986, the space shuttle Challenger broke apart during the flight. It happened only 73 seconds into the flight. This resulted in the death of all seven crew members. This photo was taken moments before the crew boarded the space shuttle. Like, look how proud and happy they all look. Little did they know that that would be their last final moments, which is extremely depressing. The crew consisted of five NASA astronauts and two payload specialists. Basically what happened was at 11.39 AM, the shuttle started to break down over the Atlantic Ocean. It started because of a failure of the O-ring seal in the right solid rocket booster. From there, the right solid rocket booster failed during takeoff. Then the force of the takeoff basically caused the rocket to break apart. Part. Now it's thought that some crew survived the initial breakup, but the impact to the ocean surface would have killed them. In our ninth spot, we have William Sanders. And if you guys like this photo series, then make sure to check out all the other parts to it. William or Dave Sanders died a hero during the 1999 Columbine High School shooting. This teacher guided more than 100 students out of the cafeteria during the tragic event. So on April 20th of 1999, two high school students entered the Columbine High School with guns and took the lives of 12 students and one teacher, that one teacher being William Sanders. So when he first heard of the shootings, he entered the cafeteria and told everyone to leave at once. By the time the killers got to the cafeteria, it was almost empty. He saved hundreds of lives, but sadly he ended up being shot twice. Now he did end up getting himself into a science lab where the students called 911 for help, but that help never arrived and he sadly didn't make it. This is the last photo taken of him. It was taken from CCTV footage in the cafeteria and shows him ushering students out. He died a hero. Coming in at number eight, we have the Uruguayan Flight 571. On October 13th, 1972, a rugby team along with some family and friends were flying to Chile for a team match when their plane crashed. This photo was taken before this crash. Some of the people in the photo didn't survive. Those that did suffer to survive 72 days in the Andes mountain. What's even worse, in order to survive, they had to eat their dead friends and family members. I can't imagine going through that. Like what a terrible, terrible incident. In our seventh spot, we have the festival killings. The photo of this couple was taken in 2017 during the Route 21 Harvest Musical Festival in Las Vegas. It was taken right before a man took the lives of 60 people there including Denise Bertitus, the woman in the photo. She was one of the victims who was shot and died on scene in the arms of her husband. On this day, more than 1,000 shots were fired. More than 800 people were injured. This photo breaks my heart. It was uploaded to Facebook and they look so happy. The first comment reads, you two with a heart. The next comment posted eight hours later is someone asking if they were okay. 
Sadly, Denise wasn't. In our sixth spot, we have the avalanche. This photo is of a man who is out touring and skiing near a ski resort named Flusserberg in Switzerland. About an hour later, he died in an avalanche. His wife, who took the photo, managed to survive. According to a post, the man was experienced in hiking mountains. He had previously climbed Mont Blanc. This day, he didn't bring his safety equipment with him because he thought it was only going to be a small hike. And he had hiked that route before. Sadly, this was his last time. They found him three hours later after the incident. His wife managed to escape, but the last thing she heard her husband say was, get away from me, save yourself, which is so heartbreaking. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Joseph Avery. In 1853, Joseph Avery went rafting on the Niagara River with his two friends. However, during the trip, the boat flipped. The current had been stronger than they anticipated. His two friends drowned, but Avery was a strong swimmer and managed to get a hold of a log that was wedged between two rocks. Avery was stuck there holding onto that log for 18 hours. It's because initially, no one could hear his screams for help. When people did see him there, it took a while before a rescue went underway. This photo was taken by a bystander. You can see Avery holding onto the log for his life. Unfortunately, it was for nothing. When he got on the rescue boat, it capsized and Avery was swept over the falls. Like, imagine that, surviving for 18 hours, holding on for your dear life, and then when you finally think you're safe, you aren't. So sad. Moving on, number four, we have Maksud Khan. Maksud Khan was a 20 year old man that had a fascination with tigers. It all started back in the summer of 2014 during his first trip to the zoo. From there, he became fascinated with tigers and would often talk about them. From there, he would secretly visit the zoo to see the tigers. Sadly, this would lead to his death. In September of 2014, Khan visited the zoo again. This time, he wanted to get up close and personal with the tigers, so he crossed three safety barriers to get in. This was the last photo ever taken of him, before the tiger mauled him to death. It was taken by a stunned onlooker who saw the tiger paw at him before dragging his body around and then eating him. Coming in at number three, we have Moira Smith. Officer Moira Smith is another individual on this list that died a hero. Moira was a police officer on scene during the 9-11 attacks. On this day, without hesitation, she went into the World Trade Center's South Tower and helped to evacuate people. This was the last photo taken of her. It's her alongside one of the victims that she had rescued. 10 minutes later, Moira re-entered the building to help more people escape. Unfortunately, the building collapsed on her. She was one of the 72 other law enforcement individuals who died on this day. May they all rest in peace. Moving on to number two, we have Leonard Sifleet. Leonard Sifleet was an Australian soldier that fought during World War II. During this time, he was sent on a mission to Papua New Guinea. But during this mission, him and his partner were captured and handed over to the Japanese, who interrogated them and tortured them. Later, they would behead them. This is the last photo taken of Leonard. It was taken right before he was beheaded. The photo was later found on his partner's dead body. It's a very dark and gruesome photo. And in our number one spot, we have Nick and Jack Savage. On June 14th, 2015, mother Becky Savage lost not only one, but two of her sons. A pain I can't even begin to imagine. So on that morning, she was picking up laundry from her son Jack's room when she found him unresponsive. The night before, it was their graduation party and they were hanging out with other friends. When she checked his pulse and found that he didn't have one, she started CPR immediately. Sadly, it was too late. He had passed away from an accidental overdose of oxycodone and alcohol. To her horror, her other son in the basement had also passed the same way. This was the last photo they ever took. It was the night of the graduation party, just hours before their accidental overdose. Okay guys, that was very, very emotional and hard, so let's move right along to our comment shout out portion. Let's try to, you know, lift the spirits. Kicking off our list at number 10, late night dip. All right, it wouldn't be a Taylor McWatters list if we didn't mention aliens more than once. This video was leaked last year in May. The footage is actually from 2019. It was recorded in San Diego. The Pentagon has since confirmed its authenticity. The UAP, the unidentified aerial phenomenon here, we don't say UFOs anymore, that's so old school. The UAP is sphere shaped and it's flying at extremely high speeds. No exhaust, no propulsion system, just a metal ball whipping by San Diego. The sphere then vanished into the water afterwards. So in case you're wondering, no, it didn't land. No aliens got out. They're like, hey, how fast was I going? No, none of that. We have no answers. No answers yet. Number nine, Talos. Basically, I'm here to announce that we're building Iron Man. 
Tactical Assault Light Operator Suit, aka Talos. It was once a project announced back in 2014, and like the former president said, this was supposed to be a modern day Iron Man suit of armor. Didn't end up being like that at all. It was supposed to change warfare entirely, but five years later, the project was scrapped. Or was it? It probably wasn't. Of course not. We're still working on Apple Watches. You're telling me they're gonna scrap this? Good joke. On one hand, obviously it's hard to do. We could barely launch Google Maps in one go, let alone a suit of armor. I imagine it's complicated. Sure. But with recent leaks, we can now take a peek at what could have been. See, ideally the suit would have given the user advanced tactical awareness alongside advanced military grade armor, which has an exoskeleton underneath that's wired to the helmet and the rest of the suit. You're, you're pretty much Iron Man. They figured out a few things while creating the suit, but overall this Iron Man armor wasn't close to being like what we're seeing on the big screen. We're, we're getting pretty close. We're getting alarmingly close, I'd say. Number eight, the Cola Well. If you dug a hole through the center of the earth and jumped in, would you come out the other side? Of course not, this isn't a cartoon. But the Arctic Circle back in the 70s sure did look like a cartoon. The deepest hole on the planet. Yeah, let's gather resources and focus on this for a bit. Sure, during the Cold War, we love it. Scientists began working on the project in 1970. For many years, Russian scientists in winter coats were drilling a hole, just down as deep as they could get. What a great job that would be, eh? They got one third through the Baltic continental crust and they found rocks older than two billion years. It was quite the project, it was exciting. But eventually they hit this muddy lava and then in 1992, they stopped drilling. A huge concern here was that demons, demons, would be released from the earth. That's fair, that's more than fair, that's, a, that's an okay concern. We don't want those around, I get it. The previous title for the deepest hole belonged to the United States Bertha Rogers Hole, which reached 31,000 feet. The borehole still remains the deepest artificial point on earth. Now, it was odd for the United States to focus on beating the Russians to the deepest point on earth. We talk about the space race often, but we forget about this one. The deep hole race. Stanley Yelnats would be so disappointed in us. We gotta talk about this more. Number seven, radar footage. Now normally when we see leaked footage, be it of UAPs or leaked documents, it's always the worst quality, right? It's always taken with like a Blackberry curve. It's hard to believe when military footage is horrible quality. Like we're trying. Help, help us, help us help you. Like how can we see photos of black holes and not have a photo of a UAP yet, right? Or do we? Well, Jeremy Corbell is here to help. He took to Twitter in May 2021 sharing footage of US Navy ships being swarmed by UAPs. This time we have radar footage from inside the ship. It came from the Combat Information Center in the USS Omaha. This 46 second clip was originally recorded on July 15th, 2019. And you could even hear a dude in the background yell about how fast the objects in the radar are moving. That's how you know it's authentic. It's like a guy like, whoa, it's like, that's crazy. On that ship too, imagine what he's seen and he's surprised. I'm shook. Number six, the Amityville photo. Yeah, a little ghost stuff for us, why not? This photo was taken inside the Amityville house back in 1976. You see, it's the, the boy with the, the eyes. Nice, you got it, nice, good eye. At first, I thought this was from a horror movie. It looks fake almost, or set up, until you start to read the details. See, this photo was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrareds. So this ghost here probably wasn't expecting a selfie, right? Photographer Gene Campbell took this photo in 1976. Gene was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren on this case. Yeah, this was long before the movies. They were just really working on this case in real life. This is history. This is so scary. The photo was revealed three years after it was taken on the Merv Griffin show. And many believe this is the ghost of John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there in 1974. Now you can't really do this anymore, right? You can't just whip out photos from an otherwise, you know, crime scene and be like, okay gang, is this a ghost? Let's take a look. No, there was obvious backlash for obvious reasons. It took three years for that photo to reach the public eye. And now all of a sudden, and everybody is talking about ghosts. Did this help? Probably not. Again, this was long before The Conjuring was ever released in theaters or anything like that. This would have been so random to see on TV. How frightening. Also, who believes in ghosts here? What's the ratio? Comment down below. I'm genuinely curious. I'm like 50-50 in the ghost game. Number five, quantum computer. This next one is pretty scary. Not a fan of this one. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Andrew Garfield told everybody that that Spider-Man leak was fake and we're all like, Okay, we'll believe it. Yeah, we believed it. That's how good technology is. It's getting dangerous. Poor Andrew Garfield, but also poor us. We're for sure doomed any day now. But thanks to our man Snowden, Edward Snowden, it was reported in the Washington Post back in January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is secretly working hard at creating their own computer. It's called the quantum computer and it cost around 80 million to build. It's a little more expensive than the new iPad. 
just a touch. This computer is safely stored in a massive room size metal box, not intimidating at all, and it's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. So it can break encryptions for just about anyone, anything, finance records, medical records, your old MSN, hopefully not, but maybe, what a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption, so we're doomed. This quantum computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption as well, which for the average computer today, that takes years. The supercomputer can break through a lot faster. So yeah, you better clear that history now while you still can, or else everyone's gonna see. Number four, more government leaks. Even allies of the United States weren't safe during Edward's leak. Thanks to Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the United States was spying on Germany, France, and Spain, all at the same time. Horrible. The NSA tapped into 35 phones spying on 35 different world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA publicly immediately after finding out and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. That hits deep, eh? I thought we were friends, we're pulling that card out? Ooh, world leader or not, nobody was safe during these phone calls. It was also reported that the NSA was monitoring calls in Spain for the average folk. Yeah, they monitored around 60 million calls in one month. Imagine how boring that job would be. Just some dude listening like. Number three, North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island is home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands on the planet. We don't talk about this island nearly enough. It's fascinating and it's also equally terrifying. It's located in the Bay of Bengal. North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers away from India and while most islands are shrinking or just disappearing, this one actually grew back in 2004. Yeah, the island lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake so the west and south sides gained an extra kilometer. Yeah, more room for more inhabitants. Let's talk about them. The inhabitants on this floating cursed island are among the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They've apparently been there for 50,000 years and there's no signs of agriculture or even fire, yet somehow this tribe has thrived for this long. And if we try and get close and you know talk to them or see what's up, they try and drive everybody away violently. In fact, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. The Indian government also didn't roll up to the beach after and start interrogating locals. Instead, they made the island now officially forbidden to enter, so stay away. Number two, the mouse with an ear on its back. <laughs> what a transition, awesome, we love segues. Back in 1997, Stuart Little here became the test subject to determine if scientists could grow cartilage using chondrocytes, aka cells from a cow. And it worked, and now we're still talking about it today, obviously. It all started when Joseph Vincanti, pediatric surgeon, began designing human organs. This was during a shortage. He wasn't just, you know, bored and started to make ears. He was changing the medical game, and little did he know, he was actually about to change the science game as well. He constructed an ear and then told his brother Chuck and his partner Bob to not bring up the fact that he attached said ear to a live mouse. He's like, please don't mention the mouse, please. How can you not? Here, check out this new ear I made. Hey, one sec, let me catch it. What? It's disgusting, what's going on here? What's this science lab you have? So Chuck spilled the beans. He didn't keep said information to himself. Can you blame him? No. But good thing he leaked the information because now we know cow cartilage can create cells. All because he spilled the beans, nice. Thanks, Joseph, and also thanks to that mouse that totally didn't volunteer for this life. Can I Q-tip his back? I want a Q-tip his back. Let's clean that little ear for him, you know? I bet that would feel great. It's like a back scratch, but an but ear Q-tip at the same time. Imagine those mixed. Stuart Little, he's got it. And finally, number one, motorized roller skates. This last one, they've been working on for quite a long time. It's one of the craziest things I've ever seen working on this channel, so yeah, I had to end off this list with this. Motorized roller skates, what a dream. Is it happening, are we close? I sure hope not. This photo was taken at the Sunoco station in Hartford, Connecticut. Context aside, this is an odd one. It's a guy with a briefcase filling up at a gas station and he's wearing roller skates. Is this 2077? No, it's actually 1956. And that futuristic looking man right there, that's Mike Dreschler. He was working for a Detroit skate company and he was very dangerously close to gas powered roller skates. It sounds like something from a cartoon where he's like, oh, I'll get you, pew, and then he blasts off. This would never, don't try this. This is a horrible idea. They would have cost around $250, which today is around 2,400, and its max speed was 17 miles an hour. So you'd still be late and you'd still be buying gas. It was a lose-lose. Imagine this in the closing act of a Mission Impossible movie. How boring would that be? Now, obviously the public wasn't supposed to see this. They feared that it would encourage folks to get creative on their own. So yeah, I'll reinforce that. Don't make rocket skates with gasoline. 
Thanks. Hit that thumbs up and don't make rocket skates. We love it. Don't eat Tide Pods or make your own jet boots. Starting off this countdown, we have The Price is Right. Earlier this year, several doctors in Michigan were being investigated after doctors were posting photos of their patients' organs on social media. The doctors were then playing a Price is Right game, being like, how much does this organ weigh? Take a guess. Very unprofessional. Plus, one of the posts showed a patient right in the background. Other photos sparked a competition with the caption, the longest one wins. Apparently, this is what a number of doctors were playing with each other. They were caught, obviously, and the photos were removed. But that still is very unethical. Not only does it make doctors seem unprofessional, but it's also traumatizing for the patients who had their organs photoshopped and manhandled. Moving on to number nine, we have the victim. Back in 2010, a 60 year old stabbing victim was rushed into St. Mary Medical Center in LA. Sadly, they passed away after the doctors were too busy taking photos of the man and posting them on Facebook instead of actually treating him. He passed shortly after the photos were taken. Not only is this a breach of patient privacy, but it caused the patient his life. That time spent taking the photo potentially could have saved him. What's worse is that the photos were shared all over Facebook and over text. Texts. So a man lost his life and they didn't think sharing images of him right before his death was wrong? How sick. In our eighth spot, we have the Skull Saw. Take a look at this scary, monstrous device. Aren't you glad it's from the 1800s and not now? This is a picture of the skull saw. It was used from the 1830s to 1860s during brain surgery. The doctors would crank this saw to cut through the skull. Thank gosh, times have changed. But still, I can't help but to cringe at the thought of that. Imagine a doctor pulling out that big device and bringing it close to your face. No thank ya. That's bound to make anyone scared of doctors. Coming in at number seven, we have the corneal transplant. Now, I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to show this photo on YouTube, so I'm just gonna describe it in great detail, just in case. We might have to censor it. Anyways, the photo I'm referring to is one of a corneal transplant. It features the patient's eye stretched wide open after the surgery. So you could see the damn stitches in the person's eye. Now, I don't know about you, but anything to do with eyes gross me out. Like in horror movies, like Saw, when people have to do stuff to their eyes, it makes me squirm and cringe. So seeing this and knowing that there's stitches in that sensitive area oh, gives me the creeps. Now this photo is obviously meant for medical personnel. Obviously, random people like us seeing it turns us off and might prevent someone from getting this important surgery. Coming in at number six, we have the smoke enema. Thank gosh doctors don't practice this anymore. So basically, a smoke enema was given to drowning victims because it was thought to help resuscitate them or warm them up if they were in icy waters. So they'd insert it into their bum and force smoke up there. This was practiced during the mid 1700s until the early 1800s. It took them that long to figure it out that it wasn't really working. Now, what I want to know is who the hell invented this and thought it was actually a good idea. All that would do is damage your colon or make you toot. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the dancing surgeon. Back in 2018, Dr. Wendell Davis Boutte in Atlanta was facing several malpractice lawsuits as she was exposed for posting videos and photos of her dancing while performing surgery. One of the patients was Latoya Archine. She was horrified after after seeing herself unconscious while her doctor danced around her. In another clip, her doctor is dancing while swinging her skin around. After the surgery, she realized that her flesh wasn't even cut in a straight line. She blames this on the dancing. Not only that, but her whole procedure was botched. Another patient of Boutte was left with brain damage after a tummy tuck gone wrong. In the end, more than 20 videos were found on YouTube. Boutte had to pay $190,000 in malpractice fees, and 38 patients are entitled to refunds from their botched surgeries, and she got a two and a half year suspension. Moving on to number four, we have the disturbing photos of patients. 
So it seems as if doctors love taking and sharing photos of their patients. It happened to a 23-year-old model who was taken to a hospital in Chicago after binging on alcohol. While in the ER, a doctor took photos of her looking very anxious and disheveled, and then posted them on Facebook and Instagram. Another example would be a doctor who took a picture of an attractive patient in the ER and posted her image on Facebook. He captioned the photo, I like what I like. That's disgusting. In another case, two nurses shared an x-ray of a patient that got a sexual toy stuck up his bum. A total violation of patient privacy. In our third spot, we have the storage of bodies. This is a very depressing photo taken at a Detroit hospital earlier this year. This hospital was so overwhelmed and overcome by death that they were running out of room to store the deceased's bodies. This photo shows the bodies in body bags piled up in random rooms at the hospital. It's very sad how many millions of lives were lost because of this pandemic. This photo serves as a scary reminder. My heart goes out to any families who lost anyone. Moving on to number two, we have the big leak. Back in February of this year, hundreds of thousands of personal patient records were leaked online and were accessible for anyone to view. This included videos of patients, photos, body scans, x-rays, and pages of personal information. This happened due to the fact that the information was being stored on an unprotected server. 900,000 patient records were accessible online. Obviously, the hospital was in a panic trying to correct their mistake. That information should have not been out there for just anyone to see. In fact, it could have allowed hackers to create a comprehensive profile of their victims. These patients could have became victims of identity theft or fraud, you name it. And in our number one spot today, we have the unconscious patient. In 2013, a doctor from BC was suspended and fined after taking pictures of an unconscious and nude patient. He then sent this photo to another staff member. The photo was of the patient's catheter site. And not only that, they were making fun of the patient and sent the photo alongside a joke. In the end, the doctor was fined $20,000, but that was to the College of Physicians and Surgeons. I don't even know if the patient was compensated. I hope they were though, that is absolutely traumatizing. They also were only suspended for six months. Absolutely sickening. Kicking off the list at number 10, the mysterious black tomb. Back in 2018, remains were found by archeologists in Egypt and apparently they had never seen the Brendan Fraser classic, The Mummy, because they opened it. Just because, you know, we wanted to see what was inside. They found a massive black granite sarcophagus in Alexandria and it hasn't been touched in over 2,000 years and we still opened it. These guys wore masks because apparently it had an awful smell. You don't say. I left a banana in my locker in high school for winter break once and honestly, nothing could beat that. That was the worst thing I've ever smelled. Not even a cursed mummy. I don't know, maybe. They opened it and they found three skeletons. Not just one, but three. Nice combo. They also found this brown sewage water just lying there, which I'm sure smelled great. They opened it up two inches and the smell was so foul that the committee that was on the scene, they straight up ran away. It's almost like opening the tomb of a mummy is forbidden and we should never do it again. Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, said in response to locals freaking out about this that we've opened it and thank God the world has not fallen into darkness. I was the first to put my whole head inside the sarcophagus and here I stand before you, I'm fine. Nice. That was in 2018. How's the world now, Wazari? Hmm? Was the mummy juice worth it? Now we're wearing masks every day, not just when we open yucky tombs. Thanks, man. Number nine, Chernobyl. One of the worst nuclear disasters of all time happened on April 26, 1986, when reactor number four at the Chernobyl power complex exploded due to unstable and low power levels. Reactor four had been shut down a day before due to maintenance, and the next day at 1.23 a.m., it exploded and radioactive debris just compiled a fuel and reactive components just rained down all over the building. It was horrible. Toxic fumes were carried from the wind, and just after four months, 28 workers had died just due to radiation exposure alone. Now, eventually, they had to evacuate over over 100,000 residents, and to this day, that zone is a no-go. Reactive 4 will stay highly radioactive for another 20,000 years, so photos for now, but if we get close, it's not gonna end up well. Number eight. Area 51. Remember that Area 51 raid, you know, when everybody was determined to find out the truth about aliens? How did that go again? At least 2,000 people came to a festival in Rachel, Nevada, located near the gates leading to Area 51. Yeah, we could only get so much time off of work. We decided that consequences don't exist. 
Power in numbers, I guess. Nice. Love the glitter and spandex. That's good. So we didn't raid Area 51 because it's one of the most forbidden places in the world to enter. It wasn't as easy as a hashtag, you know? But why exactly did people get arrested in tinfoil hats? What was the goal here? Well, these controversial photos show that there's more than meets the eye in this Nevada military base. Located at Groom Lake in southern Nevada, if you wanted to take a look at this place from the skies, say, I don't know, satellite imagery? Well, it wasn't until 2018 until those pictures were uncensored. Honestly, when UFOs were on the news recently, I thought that was the end of it. I still don't know how I feel about Area 51, but next time we raid them, let's get more than 30 people wearing flip-flops. Just an idea. Number seven. North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island here is home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands in the world. But why? Is there a resort on it? Is there some sort of Bahama Michael Jackson suite that you can't swim up to? No. Located in the Bay of Bengal, North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers from India, and while most islands are shrinking, this one actually grew back in 2004. That's right, the island lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake, so the west and south sides gained an extra kilometer. The inhabitants on this floating cursed island are amongst the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They've apparently been there for 50,000 years. There's no sign of agriculture or even fire, yet this tribe has thrived. If we try and get close, they try and drive anybody away. In fact, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives simply because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. The Indian government at this point didn't roll up to the beach and start interrogating locals. Instead, they just made it forbidden to go to completely. And honestly, that's a great call. There's other islands. Just go to Center Island. I don't know. Go anywhere else. Number six, Lascaux Caves. There's nothing more eerie than humanity's origin. And for archeologists from around the world, this cave system in France doubles as the world's oldest art gallery. Those paleolithic paintings are haunting to look at and they were created from humans roughly 20,000 years ago, but it's now considered a world heritage site. So if you're thinking about sneaking down there to write Jordan was here in Sharpie, you better think again, cause it's not open anymore. And there's a good reason for it. Aside from paintings and clues to humanity's earliest, these caves are home to ancient bones and tools. So it's pretty much an old graveyard as well. It's very haunting. The cave was opened originally to the public in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, it was closed in 1963. You have to be so tender with these ancient pieces of art. The small opening that led to the cave originally was enlarged to make room for visitors and such, but even the change of airflow after that deteriorated some of the paintings. Number five, the Paris Catacombs. As above, so below is an underrated horror film. A team of explorers accidentally go too deep when exploring the Paris Catacombs, and in turn, they have to face their own hell. Well, it's not too far-fetched, it seems. What feels like a never-ending maze, the tunnels under Paris stretch for hundreds of miles. Originally, the tunnels were built for Paris stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something haunting. See, cemeteries started to fill up, literally. At this point in time, humans weren't too clean. I mean, bodies were literally just laying on the side of the road, and they started to pile up, so the solution was to use these catacombs. These tunnels have been there for centuries, so you might as well put them to good use. And by good use, I mean arguably the scariest basement in the world, full of bones. Number four, Island of the Dolls, Mexico. The Island of the Dolls, honestly, that already sounds horrible. This island is famous for having dolls or doll parts just spread all about. Now the islands that surround this one are inhabited, they're fine, but this one is said to be filled with demonic spirits. Specifically, the spirit of a young girl who drowned there way back. It's like Camp Crystal Lake, but with even more plastic. These dolls are hanging or nailed to trees, and these dolls have to come from somewhere, and they all came from a local resident by the name of Julian Santa Barrera. He put up all these doll parts in order to try and ward away those demonic spirits and keep the island bare and just abandoned. Just keep everybody away from this. And you know what? A bunch of doll parts ought to do the trick. To this day, nobody dares to approach the island. They would much rather snap a pic from far away on their canoe, which is a great idea. If it didn't look haunted before, it definitely does now. Great call, Julian, but the doll parts couldn't have just used smudge sticks. Okay. Number three, Pluto's Gate. Also known as the Gate to Hell. Neat. These runes discovered in Turkey back in 1965 are beautiful, but obviously cursed. Historians believe that this site is the ancient city of Hierapolis, and if you're thinking about visiting these eerie runes, well, you better leave the family pet at home. Any animal that enters these ruins meets instant death. Sparrows were tossed in, and then they immediately stopped breathing and dropped. Scientists have figured out the solution, they think, and it's still pretty haunting. They measured the CO2 concentration, and it turns out that while the sun is up, it burns away this gas, but at night, when the temperature drops significantly, because that's what happens when the sun goes away, 
science. The CO2 becomes heavier than air and it creates this deadly gas cloud on the floor. And then when the sun rises back up again, the concentration of CO2 hits 35%, so now it's deadly enough for animals and even humans. Just stay away from anything called the gates of hell. There's a start. I don't know, we could have figured this out way sooner. Number two, the Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games. And some of my favorites always have a similar theme. They always have this post-apocalyptic feel. There's like shelters with survivors or vaults. It's stressful, but engaging. In real life, we have a global seed vault and it's deep in the Arctic Circle on the island Spitsbergen. It's this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault. Sounds scary, and it looks scary too. This is where humans are storing food crops. It contains 100 million seeds, so if the earth all of a sudden gets wiped out or even if all the ice melts, this vault will still be good to go. It's built high enough on a mountain so it won't drown. All that water that's just flooded the rest of humanity, well, ideally it'll regrow the earth. Sounds like a fun, cute way to get humans to think about the future, but I'm kind of concerned here. Is there something we don't know? Is there an asteroid on the way? Why is everybody involved in this so soon? Are we in a fight? Number one, tomb KV-55. Okay, we talked about a creepy tomb, now we gotta finish with another creepy tomb. Located in the Valley of Kings in Egypt, tomb 55, otherwise known as KV-55, was discovered by Edward Ayrton back in 1907. And the reason we call this tomb by a number, rather than, you know, a name or a king, is because we really don't know who or what is inside. Even the sarcophagus, we're like, ugh, bones, definitely bones. We don't know about this one at all. Even the walls inside, they aren't like other tombs covered in ancient hieroglyphs, tipping the reader off on the noble history of the king that lies before them, here there's nothing. The only hint that remains here is one hieroglyph and it translates to, the evil one shall not live again. Sick! Even these massive stones were built in order to prevent anything from getting out of that tomb. Usually with these ancient Egyptians, it's the opposite. It's made so that grave robbers can't get in. The description for whoever's inside the tomb has also been destroyed, so we literally have no idea who or what is in KV-55. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different times periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number eight, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like, look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now, this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow, a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting, and the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now, apparently, he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our seventh spot, we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year, another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the Extraterrestrial Highway, that's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. 
Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past, a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms, and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot, we have Stephen Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights, and I quote, First one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine, but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51 taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number three, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview, and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close-up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. 